Hello, my name is Emma Fossett and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator based in Newton Abbey, Belfast, Northern Ireland. Thank you so much for joining me today on Emma's Crafty Space. Today I'm going to be showing you um, this gorgeous card. It's a floating card and um, I'm going to be showing you how to make this. It's very quick and simple. I always, always bit scared of floating cards um, until I discovered the Gina K Masking Magic Sheets. They are absolutely brilliant. The only place I can manage to find them on is Amazon and you get 12 in a pack and that is pretty much the size they seem to be coming in. So they have made a huge difference on to the way I do my floating frames cards. Um, and obviously I'm going to be using the gorgeous Hydrangea Haven um, stamp sets and dies. I have heat embossed this onto basic white cardstock with white embossing powder and then got done a colour wash with them in Rococo Rose and Highland Heather and Old Olive and the reason I did it on the basic white not um, watercolour paper was is because I didn't I wanted it to kind of give that natural curl and for the paper to be a wee bit kind of distorted with the water and it just means then it gives the card a bit more texture so I will show you quickly how I did that. So I've already heat embossed this. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but there is um, a white one there. And I've got plenty of water in my aqua pen. And I'm just going to lift old olive and give it a bit of a squeeze. Now I am, I know you can um, get your reinkers and do it onto a block, but I'm just going to, I've just done it on the lid. And the reason I've done it onto the lid, because it just gives me a bit more control of what all's there. So just be quite, it doesn't have to be really accurate. And I'm going over the lines, because obviously whenever we're die cutting, you always get that little bit of um, white around the actual image. So it allows for that as well. So this is really how rough and how quickly I have done this. And the reason I'm doing it so rough and quick is because I want texture. I want it to be different color, like different intensities of the color. I don't want it to be all uniform and exact. Um, so again, we're just going in with so Seaside Spray. And again, really roughly done. Because I'm... Again, I don't want it to be all even colours because whenever you look at a hydrangea bush, there are so many different shades in the one cluster. So um, that is why. And see with the seaside spray, you can actually see a purple coming out in it as well. So it's just um, where the inks are all separating. Okay, but need a bit more water there. Don't know about you but my um seaside spray ink is mega juicy so there's always that little bit of ink around the side so you can see there where all the purples are all coming out there okay so just let those dry um i just did mine in a long sheet i got an a4 piece of, um card and cut it in half and just stamped them all out and heat embossed them and I cut them all out at once. So it just means there, I don't know if the that, um, the camera is showing those nice purpley tones that are coming through there. It's absolutely lovely. Okay, so these are my Blue Peter ones that I've done earlier. Okay, so the next step you are going to do is you are going to arrange your images. Okay, so um, this is my card base. So it's just your um, basic white cut on the short side at 10 and a half centimeters and scored on the long side at 14.85 um, centimeters. So then I have just done a matting layer and it's half a centimeter smaller. So it's 10 centimeters by 14.45 centimeters. So you can see it's just given me that nice little border around the outside. So what you're going to do is you are going to layer these in, and you can see the way these have gone kind of crispy now because they've all dried out. I want that. I want it to be kind of rough and um, just kind of not so perfect and flat. I want the texture in there. So I'm just going to layer these anyway. Okay, there's no right or wrong. You just kind of make your own up. I'm just going to pick the same format and I've got two big pom poms down here with one up in the left hand corner. So that's going there like that. I just cut a load of these out and I'm just popping these in in the background. Again, whenever I was colouring these, I kind of just went around the outside with old olive and then coloured and just did the colour wash then in the in inside because in that image there is little leaves around the outside. Okay, so 
Now you have time to change all this about. I'm just faffing about and playing about with it and finding the right position for me. Okay. So this down here and then a couple of the little leaves. Just nest them in there. You can play about with this even when the masking tape um, or the masking sheet goes down you know it's it's not set in stone you can still change it about and i'm just conscious that i want to leave a space here in the middle for um a little tag greeting Okay, so when you're happy with the positioning of everything, you are then going to peel off your masking sheet. There is other mediums that you, you can use, but I just, this one already has, um, so what your stick is on this side, but it would be similar to the stick of that of a post-it, but then you've got this good, um, sturdy, um, kind of paper as well, and you can still see your images on the other side of it not as clear there is the press and seal um but i tried it and it just was very very flimsy so i'm just making sure that this is actually stuck to the card base and underneath okay and then i'm peeling that off and now i have to trim around the outside here to get um all this excess off so you are actually in essence losing a bit of your image um images because you can see how much now i'm going to have to cut so i'm just bringing this to here and just be careful whenever you're moving it around that you're not peeling bits and pieces off Okay, that is them all off. So now I'm going to take off my masking sheet from my card base, but I want the um, die cut pieces to still be attached. So just be careful when you're doing this piece, because you don't want to peel them all off. Well, you want to peel the card off, but you want to make sure that they're all still attached. Okay, so. This is this part is a little bit tedious now. So basically, you need to put um, dimensionals on all your pieces here. Um, so it can be a little bit tedious, but whenever the card is finished, it's well worth the the um. It's well worth the effort that you've put on, put in to get these all um covered with your dimensionals. Now the ones that are closest to the edge, you really do need to make sure that they're supported with the dimensional. Okay. Like obviously the bigger images, you're going to need an extra little bit of support there with um, maybe one or two dimensionals on the one piece. Okay. Now your floating card can be as busy or as simple as you want it. Obviously, if it's a bit busier, I think you're going to get a better effect with it. Um, if you do it um, very sparse, it's going to actually be harder to see um the actual um method the actual effect that you're going for um and then obviously if i had filled in this middle part then i would have been going down the lines of um like cutting the center out there's another demonstrator um on youtube and that's what she did she did it with a strawberry cut one of the sweet strawberry cards i followed her tutorial for it and it was brilliant but that is whenever I discovered stamp and seal really isn't ideal. It was just too flimsy and I, I had no control over the images once it once I had done all the die cutting and was um at this stage of then laying it down onto the card base. So I definitely do think see these Gina K sheets are definitely better suited for it. So you might then um, discover that you see the little small pieces like this. 
you might discover you're going to have to go down the route of cutting slithers off your dimensionals just so that they're not sticking out and visible okay so that's what um one of the the more annoying things about these cards is everything has to be supported and um you nearly need to kind of preempt where your dimensionals are going to be going do you know what part of the images are going to be getting cut so i think i'm happy i'm just having a look around these outside area edges to see so this um is going to need supported down here so we'll need a wee slither for the stock Anything with foam is it's quite pliable and you can kind of bend it to what shape you need it. So next step is to peel all this off. And I'm just noticing here I'm going to need another wee piece there. Okay, so peel all these backs off now. Okay, now, now is the time if you feel that you maybe need to add couple of extra dimensionals for support this is when you do it okay so also if you feel it that you maybe need to adjust the layout with the Gina K mask and you can still see your shapes in in the background and um, you obviously can't adjust all the ones that you've already trimmed off the edge now you have two ways of attaching this you can either go down like that or I am going to try and line them up like this. Okay, so I'm just going to lay them down. Oh, just make sure they stay where they need to be. Okay, and give them a good press. Now, this little piece here, I'm going to peel off and hopefully everything is stuck and in place. So it should just peel quite easily. Okay, you might just need to support your larger pieces. Okay. okay, and that still has quite a lot of tackiness still on it. So I am going to put that back down on it. And if I'm ever making a smaller project again, then I can recycle that. Okay, so um, don't be wasteful with it. You know, you can, and because you're only getting 12 sheets and you maybe are going to have to order it from somewhere like Amazon. And it's like, I ordered that weeks ago and it has really only just arrived, I think on Friday. So um, here in Northern Ireland. So if um, it is something that you're maybe going to order, don't be wasteful with it because you know um you can make more use of it and um it means then it's going to go a wee bit further for you so next step is to attach this to your card base and um now is the time to actually have a look around your edge and to make sure you're happy with the position in case any of your edges need trimmed off as well okay so nearly stuck it on down or upside down there is he talking okay so you can see this needs a bit of support so you can either use a glue dot for that or you can use a bit of your Tombow glue it is entirely up to you which you prefer I think I'm just going to use a glue dot because it's quick and easy okay and just have a wee kind of flick over because sometimes these pieces here that have are over the top of the leaves they can be a bit loose um, so just have a wee kind of play about and a wee feel about to make sure you're happy with everything's position. So next thing is we are, I'm just going to make sure I'm happy with the position of that. Now you can see there's a bit of a rough edge there on my card, my white cardstock. So I'm just going to smooth it off with my bone folder. It's obviously just been from my trimmer. Smooth it a little rough in places. Obviously um, you don't have to use that matting layer. Um, you could just stick it straight down onto your card. It's up to you. Okay, so now I am going to decide. Now this um, is actually purple posy. It's not um, Highland Heather, but I might actually go with the purple posy for my punching. 
So this is our double oval punch, which is still available in the spring-summer catalog. And I'm going to punch this wee one here out in the right. Okay, so sentiments I'm going to stamp in Early Espresso. We are capable of amazing things. I think it's a nice sentiment to give to someone just to try to build them up a bit. Okay, so I'm just going to stamp this in Early Espresso because it's a bit softer than black. Okay, and I'm going to raise this on my tag just so it doesn't get lost in amongst all my raised flowers. And we'll glue it flat to the um, card base here. Okay, the purple posy is just a nice tone of the wash, the color wash of Highland Heather. Okay, just close this up. Just tie a little bow, not too big. dot, fold it in half, touch the bow, and then position the bow. Okay, and last but not least, I'm going to use some of the wee clear epoxy droplets. So just to fill in any spaces. And that is that. So this one is soft seaside spray and Highland Heather and this one is Highland Heather and Wokoko Rose. So I think they're pretty cute and I'd be delighted to receive one of these. It's happy meal. I will leave a list of all the items that I've used to make these projects in the description and if you give me a wee thumbs up or a wee comment that will be amazing and a subscription too please. Um, obviously it just encourages me to just keep on going and um, thank you so much for everyone that has supported me so far as you know I'm only just really starting with all this um, there is also going a link to my online store so if you don't have a demonstrator of your own I would be delighted to order any of the supplies that you might like to make these gorgeous projects thank you so much for joining me take care bye bye